All right, now we're talking about cold cycle. Closed cycle water. Closed cycle cooling water. All right. So let's come over here and start with the pump. Pumps have check valves. Those check valves are loud when you swap pumps. This is going to flow the opposite way through these heat exchangers. Temperatures is water going in? About 90, 90, 20, like 80, and 90, 80 and 100 degrees. No, okay, so that 80 and 100, you're look, between 80 and 100 you're looking at is actually on the uh, cool tower side, the surf water side. So, coming out of them, um, yeah, you're probably at the 96 kind of range, I'll buy that number. And going into them, you're like a hundred and ten ish. But the set point is not ninety six. The set point is a hundred. So how do we control that down to a hundred degrees? Up. How do we control that temperature up to hundred degrees? Temperature control. How's that work? By pinching back on the oh bypass. So you got two valves that work together to control how much of your flow goes through the heat exchangers and how much of it goes around the heat exchangers so that your header comes to that 100 degrees. This behind the chemical injection skids? Yes, right there behind the, the sulfide, the phosphate skid that we don't ever use. Um, I'm not 100% sure this valve is here, it might be on the inside. Faulty memory. All right, so then this goes and cools a whole bunch of stuff. What do we cool with closed cycle cooling water? Blue bowl skids. Blue bowl skids. With the exception of the ID fan. Air cool. But ID fan is air cool, but everything, but blue bowl skids, so the pulverizers, the main lube oil, the uh, other four fans, the boiler feed pumps, the uh, rotary air heater, the condensate pumps, pumps are, that's not, not a fan, not a, not a lube oil skid, that is directly, <laughs> that is a motor that is directly water cooled. I guess there is oil on the top, but I don't think it's a skid. Staggered cooling. Staggered cooling water. What? Is the stator? Uh, it's the stationary part of the turbine. All right. So the turbine has bars that are sitting still. That has generator. Cools. What did I say? Turbine. The turbine. The generator has metal bars that make a loop around it that have twenty-three thousand volts on them and have well, I mean. 700 megawatts on them, and that all that current is putting off heat, and we got to cool it down, and set our cooling water is how we do that. What else? Yeah, the heaters, low pressure, uh, low pressure heaters, and uh, high pressure heaters. I'm not with you, Planner. so you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> More than likely. <laughs> no. um, is that Are you thinking of the drain cooler? Yeah. 
Okay, no. Clo uh, closed cycle cooling water does not cool the drain cooler. Air compressor. Air compressor. All right. It's going to get its own spot on here. Plant air compressor. Plant air compressor, similar to the vacuum pumps, needs colder water than most of the stuff around here. So it gets its tap off here at that 96 degrees before we get to that mixing valve. So. It didn't get much better. All right. Returns to the east of the head tank. Good call. So we've got what looks like cooling water head tank. And the cooling water that went to the air compressor goes back to the head tank. Why? Keep air out of the cold cycle cooling. Right, so because plant air is 120 pounds and the water pressure is 80 pounds, if you get a leak, it's going to be air leaking into water. And because of the way pipes go, sometimes you get bubbles in a system and it wants to collect at the high point, and then you'll get something airlocked where water can't even get through there. And so by making sure that this goes to the clothes, like the, the head tank, which is highest point, and the head tank is vented to the atmosphere, that gives that air a place to go where it is not going to end up on some other coil somewhere air locking. So then this head tank goes back down to pumps. Uh, let's see, hydrogen coolers. This is also cooling the generator, but this is cooling the rotor part. This is cooling the air, the air inside the generator, the gas inside the generator, as opposed to cooling the metal bars directly. EHC considered cool skid EHC is definitely not blue oil. It is hydraulic oil. That might be it. I'm running out of ideas too. Is that what we use on the fans and the switchover? Oh, right, so uh, the generator step up transformer uh, in the summer has trouble maintaining its temperature below 95. There are sprinkler heads that blow onto the heat exchangers, and those are coming off of potable water because potable water is cheaper. This is high quality water. Uh, it's coming off the D end. This head tent, this valve is not open very much. It, it does a batch add like once every three days or once every five days or something like that. So that level will sit there at 80 and you'll take your rounds and it might be an inch lower or two inches lower or something like that. And then eventually it gets down to around 60 and then it goes, oh, fill up and it adds 20 inches back to it. All right, so all the rest of this water cool stuff comes to another header goes back to the pumps. Was well, that it? We went through that really fast. Uh, lots of these equipment have individual flow valves to control the, uh, the temperatures. So they, you know, the lube oil has its own temperature set point. So the 100 degree water going through it, may, you may need more, or you may need less, depending on, uh, well, depending on load, really. 
some of these things are piped in and they get what they get all the time, and other things have throttle valves that open and close. So when these things pinch back, then there's another valve over here. And so this valve is short circuiting the whole cool all the coolers. And where where these two valves are working to balance the temperature, this one is working to maintain a DP. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the number. But the idea is your low load, all these automatic valves out here pinch back, and this water still needs somewhere to go. So it pinches back so the DP across all the coolers combined goes up. And then this valve comes open to bring it back down to where it normally is. So it's kind of a pressure, but it is. It is a pressure control across all your coolers. That's kind of a recirc so that the ECB pumps have Probably goes back to the suction side, doesn't it? Thank you, Jackie. I'm glad you're here to confirm my intuition. <laughs> but you won't get a whole hell of a lot of flow across it, will you? I really wish I knew what that number was. I'm really sorry. Because I'm recording. So these pumps don't have a low pressure start. They do have an auto start on a pump trip on the other side. Uh, there are chemicals that get added. There's some sort of anti scalins over there behind the uh, ammonia skid. And some little 110 plug pump and then this gets pumped into like the drain on the other side of the suction there. On the second floor, there's like a tiny little chili pot setup that we don't ever use. That's another way to put chemicals in. That's the way the designers intend to put chemicals in, but apparently we decided we liked more chemicals than that. At times, the chemists will decide that there's too much chemicals in the system, and then they open drains out here, and the drains squirt on the floor, and then instead of filling uh, every few days, this thing will fill every couple hours until we get the chemicals diluted down with fresh water, and then we stop, and then we start the process over. sure if this should have been in the surf water part because it's actually on the surf water side that you're doing the backwash. But on the inlet side of each of these heat exchangers there is a strainer. And there is a piping arrangement where you shut the normal inlet and outlet And then you line up an alternate inlet and outlet. That runs through it backwards so that everything in that strainer gets washed out and goes back to the cool tower. You, you don't approve? In a perfect world, maybe, but you can backwash it for 20 minutes and not drop any. So as far as the DP across it, you mean? Alright. I ain't never seen any DP change since I've been taking turbo rounds. But I have one. That pumps. For an hour. And then it goes up. Alright. Was it 13? 
11. <laughs> well, I will tell you that when we when we put it on the weekly check sheet, it was actually making a difference to our ability to uh, make to keep this temperature down to 100, basically. So doing it every week is a little ridiculous. So maybe the reason you're not seeing much difference is because we do it every week and it doesn't get, never gets dirty enough to see anything. Well, it does drop the temperature off when you do it. You'll see a 8 to 10 degree drop in temperature, but it, that only lasts for 30, 40 minutes for that temperature coming back up. Because you can look at the temperature gauge on it whenever you do the back wash. You'll see a temperature drop while you're doing it. If you go back into the normal state, it would slowly start climbing back up. Yeah, that's that's. Kind of one of the ways how you know when you back actually backwash. You know you got lined up right because yeah. the temperature starts changing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's just a cone style filter in there. That's all. It's like a baffle screen, right? That is correct. Yeah. So. I draw this like it's a swirly line. What it really is, is a whole bunch of plates. And I want to say that circ water flows up across the plates and that cooling water, flows like cooling water flows down across the plates. And uh, then on the circ water side, you've got that header has like a witch's hat type strainer that goes in there that catches all the mud and crap. And, and uh, like I said, doing it every week probably isn't doing much. Doing this strain every week, you, you can see what you're doing in there, and you know you're not doing much. But you also know that coming out of an outage, when we built scaffolding in the damn coolant tower, then you're going to be doing this strainer three times a day. Yeah, three times a day for the first day and a half. Three times a shift for the first day and a half. When we first start trying to pull vacuum, we go, we're not getting any. It's too hot. And then that's why. Uh, similarly, these ECB DPs, you might see a bigger difference right after an outage. All right, I think that's all I got. Any questions? Yeah. Bad job. Thank you, Jack. <laughs>